Welcome to our first podcast for Chapter Notes. Now, if you look up in the corner, if you're ever wondering what's going on, you can see right here the 1.1. The um, that tells you what chapter and what section. So we're this is section 1.1. And I do want to remind you, as you're watching these, if I go too fast, if I've advanced the slides before you've written things down, uh, whatever you need, or if, if what I said didn't make sense, don't forget to pause and rewind. That's the beauty of these things. You can take your time uh, as much as you need to try and get this into your brain. So let's look at this. Uh, at the top, it says matter. My question to you is, what is matter? Now, when I was teaching in middle school, we used to have a very simple definition. It was the stuff contained in an object, which is a real basic definition. Uh, we want to take it a little step further. For our purposes, matter is anything that has mass and volume. Right now, if you're not too familiar with these words, I'm going to say mass a lot of times, but you could think of it as weight, right? And volume, you could think of it as how much space something occupies, right? So think about everything that you've ever come in contact with in your life, and ask yourself: Do any of these things not weigh, or do any of these things not take up space? Just take a moment, think about that. Did you come up with any? Well, every once in a while during lecture, some students will say, how about this? Light. I go, oh yeah, light. I don't think light, you can't weigh light. You could argue it takes up some space. Or somebody else might say, sound. Okay. Sound is the same way. I, you could argue it, it takes up space, but I definitely can't say the word the and stick it on a scale and find out much what it weighs. Well, what are those two forms of? Those are two forms of energy. Okay. So mass is not energy, although you can kind of equate them through Einstein's equation. And everything else in the universe, uh, if it's made up of atoms, if it's got some kind of mass, if it has, takes up some space, we consider it matter. And the cool thing is, forever they said we'd never be able to see atoms. Well, they've come up with some specific microscopes that will not necessarily see the atoms, but they can feel the atoms. And so what all those little bumps represent are individual atoms sitting on a plate. And that's kind of like the electron cloud. And then even cooler, I think, is a few years ago, they got this picture. Now what this picture represents, if I remember right, is that uh, it's a bunch of six carbon rings all attached. Now I don't know what the whole structure is called, um, but these look like benzene rings, and they predicted, scientists predicted this would be the shape, and sure enough, when they got uh, a, a device that could actually see it, it had that shape, okay? And every corner right here represents a carbon atom. Really cool. And this is a, a little bigger picture. Almost looks like little uh, <clears throat> bacteria or something, but they're actually little five uh, ring structure um, molecules. Pretty cool. All right. Well, let's move on to uh, another way we know matter in an everyday situation, and that's as a state. Okay. <clears throat> there are three definitions, right, or three words there, solid, liquids, and gases, and you are surely uh, familiar with those. So I've got some pictures down here for those of you that like pictures, because I sure do. Here's uh, water. If you look at that, we've got some ice cubes sitting in an Erlenmeyer flask. And if we could see on the molecular level, because we want to start doing that, we're chemists. If we could see down here on the molecular level, we would see that here are the water molecules, and they all seem to be attached, kind of in uh, like a, a hexagon like that picture you just saw. So it looks like they're locked in there. And if we look at our definition of solid, okay, solids have a, vic a fixed volume in the shape. And their particles are held in a rigid structure. And so if you look at this uh, example of water right here, you can see they're locked up in that structure right there. Okay, They're rigid. And if you've ever held an ice cube, you know that it's a, a rigid uh, substance. And if we could film it, those solid particles would be vibrating very slightly. So for us, we've got to remember that solids have a fixed shape, fixed volume, doesn't matter where you pour them, they're not going to change. And they are, you can kind of think of them as bricks in a building. They're locked in in some kind of structure. All right. Well, let's look at the next one. Okay. And so we've got liquids here. We've got a lot of liquid in 
the Puget Sound region. There's a whole bunch out in the water, and uh, as I'm sitting here doing this on a nice June day, it's pouring. Um, and if you look at the structure on the molecular level, okay, you can see that there's nothing go there's nothing attaching those to each other. Okay, there's a little space between all the water molecules. See that space? Okay, so somehow those molecules can slide past one another. And as you know, it doesn't matter what you pour a liquid into, it will take the shape of its container. So for liquids, um, let me push this down a little bit, they have a fixed volume but not a fixed shape. In other words, if I have 100 milliliters of, of water, it doesn't matter what container I pour it in, it's going to be 100 milliliters. But if the container is a long skinny cylinder or a short beaker, they will take whatever shape uh, container you pour them into. And as it says right here, the particles slide past one another. Okay, How is that possible? Well, look down there. See how there's nothing locking them in? Okay, there's nothing attaching them like there is this solid. All right, and so they can slide past one another. All right, and then the last little definition in our last sentence there, you can see they flow and take the shape of their container. Well, let's move on to the last one, and this is one of the ones I like the best because I love gas law problems and uh, all the properties of gases. Let's say I have steam. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now look at the particles here. What do you notice about that circle? Well, you probably notice there's only two water molecules floating around. Look how much space you have between the two. And then there's so much space, we can't even see the other ones, but they're floating around there somewhere. Okay. So what does that do as far as properties of gases? Well, it allows them to take the shape of their container just like a liquid. But they're flying all around. There's lots of space in between them. And they're, in fact, moving very quickly. So... Gases, they have no fixed volume or shape. They will take the shape of the container, and they move very fastly. Okay? The cool thing about gases is you can take all this space right here, all this space, and you can compress it. And if you've ever filled up a propane tank, you'll notice that they're pumping a lot of gas, and then you pick it up, and it's now kind of sloshing around in there. And that's because you squeeze so much of that space out of there that it actually turns into a liquid. Right. So those are, the, those are the three states of matter, and what I want you to really focus on is not only their basic definition, but kind of what, what it looks like on a molecular level, the stuff right down here. Because we're chemists, and we want to make sure that we realize what's going on on a very, very small scale. All right. On to the next thing. We're going to talk about some chemicals, chemical reactions. Now, this word right here, chemical, tends to have a bad rap. Okay? Maybe you've said this, oh, I'm not going to eat that. It has chemicals in it. Or, ooh, it's, we don't want to spray chemicals on our lawn. Things like that. Well, a chemical, from our standpoint, a chemistry standpoint, has got a little different definition. Okay? We say a chemical is anything that has a definite composition. Now, what do I mean by definite composition? Well, let me write a formula for you. Here's a formula of a chemical that I actually enjoy quite a bit. Okay? Well, that's the formula for water, right? Every water molecule has a composition of H2O. That's the definite composition. Here's another one that I like quite a bit. NaCl, sodium chloride, better known as table salt. Love it on my popcorn and even on my french fries. Right? Those are chemicals. So you can't really go, ooh, chemicals are bad for you. Not true. If it has a definite composition, it is a chemical. And we consume them and use them in our daily lives all the time. Now, there's no question there are some bad chemicals or chemicals that are harmful to the environment. But, uh, you know, next time you hear someone say that, say, hey, here, have a drink of some of this. And you know, give them some water and tell them they just drank some chemicals. Okay. Now, with chemicals, and the fun part of chemistry, and you'll see me do a lot of demonstrations for you, uh, are the chemical reactions. Now, most students like fire and all that kind of stuff and explosions, and I do too. But chemical reactions is really what a lot of the stuff we're going to study is, is going on. So let's look at what we've got here. Okay, This is the definition, kind of wordy, of a, a chemical reaction. Um, let me get it a little bigger for you guys. 
a process by which one or more substances change to produce one or more other substance. Kind of a wordy definition. Let me just show you with a picture what we're talking about. Okay? Over here on this side, I've got atoms. I've got atoms that are paired up. All right. Kind of like if you go to a 7-Eleven and you buy some Twinkies, you get two. Or those snowballs. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, but those snowballs, you always get two. Well, these atoms are always paired up. All right? And you can see them just kind of floating around by themselves. Here's a large pair of molecules. Here's a smaller pair of mo molecules. And what has happened through the magic of chemistry, some energy uh, is either added or, or taken away, and we make something new. Okay, now if you look at the definition of something, if we wait, if we produce one or more different substances, that is a new substance. Now in a chemical reaction, all of these spheres right here have react, not all of them, but some of them reacted to make this new thing. Look at this. This is made up of three little spheres and one large sphere. Okay, so we've made some new substance. Okay. Now, we still have a couple floating around that didn't react, but that's okay. That's something we'll deal with a little bit later. But something over here has combined to make something over there. That's the definition of a chemical reaction. And you are going to see a lot of cool things this year. And um, most of the cool things are based on uh, chemical reactions. All right. On to our